Hello there. What's going on everyone? It's TJ here from Rugby Muscle and today, as you can tell from the title, we're going to discuss something that is very, very important, but criminally underrated. I said criminally. Is that criminally or criminally? Criminally underrated by rugby players and that is getting some neck work in your training So welcome back to Rubby Muscle. My name is TJ. If you are new here, then it's not welcome back. It's welcome. I am a strength and conditioning coach who specializes in working with amateur rugby players. And today we're going to talk about something that is very important for you amateur rugby players to get into. And that is training your neck. Why is it so bloody important? What can we do? We'll discuss all of that right now. Actually, before I do though, let's do it. Thumbs up on this video. If you are watching the video, if you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review. If you're listening on any other podcast, go to Apple Podcasts and hit five stars and type up a quick review. It really does help the channel grow and help the podcast grow, help this work get to more and more people, help raise the level of rugby strength and conditioning and everyone's performance to go along with that and everyone's enjoyment to go along with their increased improvement. So the other thing that you can do is send it to a mate uh, especially someone that's got small necks or has the problems that we're going to talk about here that can be uh, fixed with neck training. So neck training is often overlooked because it is kind of awkward to train, right? There's no neck machine in the gym. There's no way to uh, like MacGyver up a, a, a dumbbell to put on your neck and to, to lift it or a barbell. Like there's no real way to do it. It's also known as being very unsafe to work the neck, and there is definitely some of that, some truth to that, which we'll get into. But more than anything else, I think it's a little bit of a lack of appeal, right? People just don't care about growing their neck, which is a huge mistake to me. Number one, because I think, like, if you're if you're a guy that's looking for like the opposite sex to be interested, like just a phys purely physique vein thing, I think there's nothing worse than having a real like little pencil neck i think a, a big strong neck is important but also because like it's just something that's very important for you as an athlete to have is a nice strong neck i think it's also an important piece of the puzzle to like improve your game as far as as we'll get into in contact situations and different things that you can you need to do as a rugby player can be improved by having a bigger stronger neck and also of course there's something that will allow you to improve as a rugby player because it's going to stop you from or potentially give you an opportunity to not be injured we're going to look at concussions we're going to look at other injuries and therefore if you're spending more time in the game that's going to give you more opportunities to improve first and foremost i was going to put the concussion stuff first but i, I do think that this is really important it's your spine health right in rugby you're doing a lot of this just smashing into people this is probably not good for your spine. I think working your neck is the top of your spine. That is going to really help you improve your overall posture. And if you're improving your posture, that's going to help address lots of shoulder issues that rugby players has, have from being sort of hunched forward. It also helps shoulder issues for people that work at desks. Again, hunching forward, working at a desk like this is how a lot of people spend the vast majority of their time that's not a good strong position for your back and it's not a good strong position for your neck. So the more that you can get your spine nice and straight by getting a nice strong neck to carry your head is going to help you stave off those upper back injuries and potentially lower back injuries and potentially shoulder issues that a lot of rugby players have as well. It also is going to help you improve your performance by having a nice strong spine across the board right it's going to help you not just stay on the pitch as far as like not being injured as i spoke about earlier but also as far as all contact situations there is going to be some back involvement and the stronger that your spine can be the better you're going to perform not only that but also for your posture as far as like if you've got a nice strong posture it's going to help you not like get tired in games and hunch over and then when you're hunched over you actually get more tired because you're not able to open up your lungs you're not able to look up and observe the pitch you're having to carry that weight through your musculature so the stronger that your spine is the better your performance is going to be on the rugby pitch obviously long-term in issues for injuries with the spine are going to 
come into play and not just like impact your rugby ability, but also impact your life. So again, working your neck is going to improve that stuff. When we're looking at disc damage or pinched nerves, different things that go on with your spine. If you can have a nice, healthy, strong spine, it's going to help you stay away from those things. And then finally, one other thing I put here is sleep optimization. If your neck's in all awkward positions because it is weak, that's going to impact to some degree, or it can impact to some degree your breathing, which you know can actually have a big effect on your sleep, which then has a long-term impact on your life quality, but also your recovery and ability to play rugby better. Now, of course, we move on to something that is near and dear to me because I'm someone who actually had to retire from rugby due to concussions. Concussion prevention, right? I actually did quite a bit of this and... I'm not going to say it's the the overall 100% the answer to everything, but it definitely does help. When you think about concussions, concussions come about not just from a hit to the head. Concussions come about from your brain inside your skull getting shaken and hitting the sides of your skull. That's the mechanism of a concussion. It's like if you've got a shaker, right, and your brain is in this fluid inside this shaker, and I go like this whatever was inside this well i said brain but like say i put something else inside it's going to hit the sides and it's going to be bruised and stuff and that's that's what a concussion essentially is so what the neck does for this is the, your neck is a a stabilizer it's a shock absorber it stops that from happening so if now i i hit this and if i hit this with a weak neck it's going to shake and again potentially give a bruise if i hit this and i've got a strong neck there's less movement there's less opportunity for your brain to get bruised and therefore give you a concussion so a strong neck can be seen to help reduce the impact of knocks to the head so far as bruising the brain that stuff can also help you improve your performance in contact right because you're then you're, you're that shock absorber stops your head get from getting moved side to side and therefore where the head goes the body will follow if your head is going up in contact you're able to drive your opponent back if you get your head put down there's a good chance you're going to go off your feet and lose that contact situation so i really do think having a strong neck is going to help with your not just your ability to potentially avoid concussions but also your ability to perform within those rocks because of that because you're able to absorb the shock and you're able to like maybe a ride a tackle stay strong and maybe make an offload or just stay strong and not be concussed and go to the floor like a lot it's the reason boxers work their necks is the reason mma guys work their necks because they when they get in the head they want to stay focused they want to not get knock the fuck out right they want to keep playing so do you as a rugby player you want to make sure that your neck stabilizes those hits and you're able to not get the big bruises on the brain that lead to concussion and of course as i've already sort of touched on it does increase your performance in contact as well if you're looking at your posture in a tackle if your head shoved down you're less way less likely to make that tackle if your head's already gone on the floor let me blow up this image here so you, as you can see here this tackler in the yellow if you're listening on the podcast you can always go to the youtube channel to watch it but we've got an attacker who is trying to fend off a tackler here in this situation and he's shoving the head down of the tackler that tackler is no longer going to be able to complete that tackle because his head is in a terrible position and his body's just going to go to the floor likewise in a mall if your head is nice and up and strong you're able to drive through that mall and be in a good position if your head is facing down like these fellas kind of are here in the scrum you've all of a sudden lost your base and you're, you're again you're, your force is going down to the ground not into your opponent and that's really important in in all your contact situations that you have a nice strong neck that you have a nice strong posture because your head is what leads the way if your head is going to the ground you are going to the ground you're not going to be effective in your rugby contact situations and it's not just for forwards in the scrums in the front row of the scrums in particular yes that's the most prominent example of this but it also is for everyone in rucks in in malls that gets involved in any contact situation so in tackles as well and also there's some potential for working your neck to improve your range of motion so therefore you can actually see more of the field and that's this is one i've sort of tacked on at the end here because it's I, I have no anything i don't have anything to back this up but it's something that i found can be a, of a benefit I actually i found it as a benefit for me i've improved my range of motion of my neck and i've sort of drawing the dots there to say okay that should be able to make me see more of the pitch 
without you know making grandiose movements and maybe when you're on a run right if you're sprinting in a direction you're looking for your support you can turn your neck with a strong neck you're able to turn it and strong and better range of motion you're able to look for your sport even better and of course having a strong neck long term is going to help you with recovery particularly for like those that are in the scrums I know people that go to the front row and their traps and their neck are hurting for days afterwards. And the stronger your neck is, the less that's going to happen to you, right? It's like if you were going to the gym and you were forced to lift 400 kilos from a deadlift or you're like, you know, where you're like sort of assisted or you've got to carry it down, that's going to hurt you the next day. Unless you can already do that, quite cap- you're quite capable of doing that and therefore you're not feeling doms from that. All right, so how do we go about training the neck? There's five different movements that the neck does, and then we're going to figure out how exactly how we're going to load them. So the five main movements are flexion, extension. So saying yes, right? That's fle- flexion is head nodding your head down. Extension is nodding your head up. So oh, this camera follows me as I do it. So down, like when you're bowing to someone, and then tilting your head up as if you're meeting a friend that you don't really want to say hi to or to chat with. So you just go, all right, and you just nod your head up right that's your first one flexion and section that's your main movement if you could just did that you'd have a lot you experience a good deal of neck strength gain but we also want to really make sure that we're, we're building a, a properly developed neck so the other way we do this is lateral flexion and extension so we go side to side like we're trying to like we have water in our ears and we're trying to empty that water out without touching it so you head side to side you try to touch your ear to your shoulder and then the final movement that we can do with our neck that we like to load up or we can load up to improve your strength of your neck is rotation. So saying no, you say no, no. And moving your neck from side to side without moving your shoulders. And we can load these up in the gym. I might even clip over this video different exercises where we're training those but I'm going to just discuss them right now. So your main options, or the most common option actually that you'll see is going to be isometric training for your neck, which involves just using your hands. And so all those different positions I've stated, you can just use your hand and push. So this is me pushing against a rotation, just trying to turn my head and I'm pushing against it with my hand, pushing side to side. I'm also then pushing against lateral flexion or against flexion and extension. And you can do that, and that actually can be a good start. I just don't like it because you're going to need to progress it at some point, right? You don't just do static push-ups to develop your chest. Likewise, you don't just do isometric work to develop your neck. And also, it's very difficult for people to take that sort of stuff seriously. So we like to give stuff reps. We like to give stuff sets. We like to give you a proper exercise that you can do as part of your training. And so here are your main options. You can use bands, which are fairly easy to adjust. They're portable, they're light. You can take them to the gym with you. Bands are a very good option for rotation work. And I'll clip over a video here of me doing neck rotation with a band, which actually works really well. The cons to that are like, it's very difficult to like get a solid range of motion depending on how heavy the band is. It's also difficult if you're in a room without a solid anchor point, sometimes that can hold you back and you're not able to actually work the neck. I've also found that, again, it's it's more the difficulty for me is the different, is if you've just got one band and then you progress through it, it's difficult to judge how you're progressing because you might on one day stretch it a lot more than the next day and not really acknowledge that. And then you're not able to notice that you've improved because you might think, oh, okay, this day is much harder and it's difficult. I always like to see consistent and easy to see and easy to register progressions when it comes to your training. So therefore, maybe instead we look at cables and we look at a much easier way to adjust that resistance. And you know, as long as you've got some sort of mechanism whereby you can attach something around your head, you can do all of the movements I've just discussed on that cable machine and it's fairly easy to use and then probably the other con that i'll see with cable machines is it's very easy to get caught up in the weight that you're lifting and sometimes they have too big a jumps with the the weights and you get to a point where you add a weight that's too heavy and you start using your shoulders to rotate this is something that i've seen a lot or they start to use your, your you know your upper back to move your neck this camera's going all over the place. You get my point, right? You start using your body to do the neck isolation exercise because you can't do cable work lying down. So then 
Our other solution is clearly going to be free weight. So you can just put a plate with a towel on your head and you can just go ahead and do all of those different movements. It's definitely difficult to do rotation exercises this way. In fact, it's basically impossible because it's, you're just going to shake that weight off your neck if you're lying down. But the flexion and extension, and if you just did that consistently, you would see growth in your neck strength and you'll be able to see the improvements that we've discussed here in this podcast. So I'd give that a go. And again, make sure you put a, a towel there just to keep it hygienic. You would also do put a towel on any cable attachment you're doing. You could also put an attachment to the band or you could even put a band to a cable is something that I've done before as well. And so in summary, I just think necks are basically the new calves, right? It's definitely something that you need to, you know you should be training at this point, but most people just neglect them. It's also something that doesn't take that much. It doesn't take a lot of work. It takes two sets. You could get a, a, a significant increase in your neck strength and, and get the vast majority of the benefits from two sets in each direction a week. That's it. Now, if you went up to three to four, maybe you're going to get a little bit of an extra benefit. Slowly but surely increase the amount of sets because you don't want to have your neck be screwed the next day. But it's definitely something that I would include. You can add this stuff to the end of your gym session, again, like calf stuff, but you could also add it to your warm-up just to make sure that you get it done. And really, the idea here is, the main thing I want to say is that you want to train this like other muscle groups. You want to just develop the musculature around your neck enough so that it gives you these benefits. Again, that's why I don't like the isometric stuff, like the putting on your hands. Like, you wouldn't do that. Like, I'm not going to benefit, try and go, okay, I'm going to do some chest work. I'm just going to push my hand against my... That's not going to work, Right you want to get into it you actually want to train it like you do other muscle groups and in fact something that i haven't addressed yet in this video that i should address right now is that neck bridges are not a good way to unless they're just isometrics when you're doing neck bridges that's something that i would not bother doing because for me the you can do that movement or you can do you can build a strong neck without doing that and there's just a little bit of potential for that to go wrong and there's risk and there's like actual data out there showing that there is definite a risk and it's definitely something i wouldn't advise rugby players doing to try and improve their game it's just i don't think it's worth it and i don't think you should be doing it. i think instead you should be looking at doing the, the movements that we've discussed in this video you can train your neck away from the gym so you could take some stuff like you know you could go to like before your rugby training session or before your speed session just do some neck work but i think for the most part if you've learned something from this video necks are the new calves make sure you train them don't be a bitch and just say that you're naturally got a small neck no you can train your neck you can make it strong and effective now before i finish this video i do want to give you one option for training your neck and a really efficient very well developed system which is the neck x system I've been sent one of these units for full transparency. They're not paying me at all. They're not. I don't even get a cut of any of these discount links that you're this discount code. If you if you choose to buy one, I just thought it was a good system. What I like about it is it has three different resistance bands, so that you can really adjust and get into the different ranges of motion that we have discussed in this video. And they have markers on the bands, so that when you're holding the bands you know how much extra resistance or less resistance you're giving yourself each time, therefore allowing you to progress. If you're interested, I will do a full video reviewing the NECX system. Let me know in the comments below if that's something that you would like to see. Or if you would like to purchase one of these, you can enter the code RUGBY10 for $10 off one of these neck x system units i'll put the link in the description below once again they are not paying me for any of this i just think it's a really useful system it's very light this is one way that you can train it outside of the gym you can just do it you know even once every night if you wanted to build up that much of a tolerance but you could do it conveniently at home and really develop a neck using this neck x system i like what they're doing with this so if that's something that interests you link in the description below I also will give a plug for Team Rugby Muscle because we do neck training as part of our regular training within the Rugby Muscle method. So if you want to check that out, if you want to not think about what you need to do for your rugby strength and conditioning, for your neck training, just execute on a weekly basis and see your rugby performance skyrocket. Check out Team Rugby Muscle in the links below. 
Subscribe if you're new. Hit thumbs up. Let me know any opinions that you have on neck training in the comments below. Or just leave any random comment for the algorithm. It really does help out. Share this with a friend and I'll see you guys in the next one.